purpose of this video is to talk about something that I think is pretty important if you're a landowner, particularly in rural areas like where we live, and that's knowing where your property boundaries are. Not only knowing, but make sure everybody else knows that you all agree on them, you and your neighbors, that they're well marked and clearly defined. We own about 12 acres all together. Most of it is woods, and I intend to keep it that way. It was really important to me when we were looking for a place to homestead and farm that we had a little bit of open area already to grow some crops, raise some livestock, but I really enjoy the woods. And also I wanna be able to be as self-sufficient as possible. So I wanted to have a wood lot that we could harvest timber from for the purpose of building, but also to supply us with firewood, maybe tap a few maple trees once in a while. So that's something that was really important to me and we looked for for quite a while before we found this place. And one of the first things that I did was go around and find all the property pins. So we actually own a lot in what is supposed to be a subdivision, but it's very rural. And while it is a subdivision, technically, it's not like we're houses cheek by jowl. As you can see, I've got 10 acres of woods back here. I said 12 acres earlier, we actually own part of the private road that our house lot sits on. So that takes up a substantial amount of that acreage. But it's about 10, 10 and a half acres that we own that's actually usable land not taken up by the road and we have what's considered a double lot so all of the acreage around us is broken up into about four or five acre lots so we have several property pens along the length of our eastern and western boundaries so i wanted to make sure i found those and knew where they were and knew they were well marked and the previous landowner actually had this property surveyed a number of years ago and that was pretty helpful because I could still find some of the survey pins. But one of the things I did, in addition to finding the pins, was re-flag the entire property boundary on the long sides particularly. On the north and south ends of the property, there are roads. So we have right away on two roads, one of which we own. So that's actually not much of a problem, but I wanted to make sure that the eastern and western boundaries are well marked with flagging tape. And also in another way that I'll show you in a little bit. So this pink tape is what the surveyor put out, and the green tape is what I've come along with later and flagged. You can see I've got a couple of pieces on this tree. This is something that needs to be done and maintained frequently, but I went through and cleared a two to four foot path on my side of this property line so that it's very well defined and it's very easy to find. It took me about a month and a half, I would say, of walking in the woods over and over again with tape measures and line of sight efforts to find all of my pins once we had purchased this property and then to mark the lines between the pins. But now that I've got this done, I'll know exactly where those pins and flags and lines are forever, as long as I own this place. And this goes in a straight line. If it weren't for the fact that this property is pretty hilly, I'd be able to see from one pin to the next one all the way back from one road to the next. And now we're actually on the, what I consider the back side. it's the south end of our property. As you can see, right on the other side of the line is somebody's summer retreat. But what I wanted to mention was another side benefit. When we moved here, and this wasn't cleared out yet and wasn't well marked, when I first came back here on this dead tree, and then I think it went over to that little hawthorn there, there was a string with some tin cans on it, and those tin cans had a bunch of bullet holes in them. They clearly were using it for target practice, which doesn't bother me at all, that's fine. However, they were standing on their property and shooting into what became our property. I'm not a big fan of that. So that was something that I knew I clearly needed to address. So over the course of a month and a half, I came out and marked this very clearly made sure that all of my flags were completely accurate. I know where the pin is. We're almost there to that pin. And started clearing this trail so that it was very evident where the line was. And the next time I came back out here, that string was gone. So I had intended to get in touch with that neighbor, go to the town office and find the tax records and find the contact information and get in touch with that person and have a discussion about uh, 
using the string and the cans and shooting into our property. But I never end actually ended up having to do that because once the lines were clearly defined, it became quite clear that we as the new owners of our property were going to use this area uh, a lot more than the previous owner had. And I think people got the message even without having to have that conversation, which could have been uncomfortable and awkward, which doesn't mean that I wouldn't have it, but um, I think it's just a much easier way. It sort of sorted itself out. And in the meantime, we have, I don't know, probably eight or nine different lots around us. And several of them are absentee owners who live in other states, uh, either have it as an investment property or just come up and use it like this, this person does in the summer. Um, but we have established relationships with all of the landowners that are around us. And I think that's also something that's really beneficial to do. I've gone and introduced myself to people or they have come and introduced themselves to us as new people have moved in to the neighborhood over the last few years. And we all have a great relationship. I think that's something that's really important to try to strive for. Uh, it's easy to do if you move into a place and you don't have any baggage. I know there are a lot of places where people have, you know, generations old arguments with neighbors. We didn't have that problem here, so we tried to establish a good relationship right from the get-go. And um, we let, you know, our neighbors hunt on our property. Uh, you know, Ziggy is all over the place. He's on the other side of the line right now, but we all get along and I've trained him to come over and we're all respectful of each other's property. I've trained Ziggy to come back to me when I call him. And um, we just try to respect each other's property as much as possible. I think that's a really good philosophy to have. You avoid conflicts and everybody gets along. And it's really a good thing to strive for. But I think the first step is just knowing where your pins are and where your property lines are so that everybody knows where they are and everybody understands and agrees. Um, and that way there's no confusion. Our Western property boundary comes out on this other road, private road, which we don't own but do have a right of way for. One of the things that I thought was important to do was actually talk to the landowners who don't abut our property but who own property all along this, this other road. Because even though I have a right of way, my right of way ends at our uh, southernmost, southwesternmost pin. There's absolutely no reason to assume that a right of way gives you right to use the road past your property. That's not the point of it. Some people interpret it that way, but I think that's problematic and incorrect. So what I did was just basically get in touch with all the property owners down here and ask if it was all right if I walked my dog and cross-country skied, and they all said yes. So I think, again, if you can do things that way at the outset and try to avoid any problems and confusion and be respectful of each other, you can really get a lot further in life. And it's something that we're trying to strive for to keep everything in harmony in this neighborhood. So Ziggy and I are going to walk down to the lake. It's a beautiful day in late March. Might as well take advantage of it.